Alrighty. Well, thanks so much for that intro, Gwen. I want to, before I forget, thank thanks uh, to everyone for attending, and uh, thanks to the Metals Investor Forum for inviting me. Uh, the title of my talk is, as you can see, the greatest buying opportunity of all time, but don't buy now. That pretty much sums it up. So there's there's going to be uh, maybe three or four little parts of this talk. So I have some additional title slides just uh, to focus on these areas. So what really drives gold, and then secondarily, what drives hard assets, and why did we have the bear market? Um, I don't know if uh, any of you heard Eric's talk yesterday morning, but he was talking about real interest rates, and I was very happy to hear that, because if you follow my work, you know that I believe that the real, uh, not to create a pun, but the, I mean the real driver of gold is declining real interest rates or negative real interest rates. And what this chart shows is we have the price of gold there, we have the real Fed funds rate in the middle. So it's basically that's uh, the Fed funds rate minus inflation, the rate of inflation. And then we have the real five-year yield. And we, I highlighted uh, some of the bear markets um, in gold. And you can see what happened to uh, real interest rates especially in the last four years, even though real interest rates did not go to 2 or 3 percent, I mean, they went from minus 3 or minus 4 percent, depending on what you look at, to basically zero or slightly higher. And, and that is negative or was negative for gold and precious metals because it was trending in the wrong direction. And, you know, what we've seen in the past year or so, you can see there that uh, real interest rates have gone down again. They've turned down in the last year. So that's really the main driver. And by the way, this is the same. I mean, you could put up, uh, you know, interest rates in Canada and their bonds. You could do it for Japan or Europe, and, and you would have a very similar chart. So when you're trying to figure out, you know, where the price of gold is going, focus on real interest rates. So that's focus on inflation and then focus on where, uh, where interest rates are going. And uh, I also want to mention this because Eric in his talk also mentioned that uh, real interest rates also do influence the other commodities. I mean, primarily gold, but they do influence the other commodities. And so at the bottom, uh, that's the real Fed funds rate going all the way back to 1920. And the past secular bull markets and commodities, they went from 1897 to 1920, 1933 to 1951 than about 1968 to 1980 or 81. And you can see, you know, I have the arrows there that show, uh, you know, when the secular bull markets and hard assets ended, and it correlates very well to uh, negative real interest rates. And we can see how the secular bull markets ended. There was a huge increase in real interest rates. I mean, they went from being negative to positive, but in a, uh, it was a wild swing, as you can see. And in the early 50s, the Fed changed policy and so, I mean, looking at the 1940s, the Fed basically, I mean, they're monetizing debt the way they're doing now, but when inflation picked up, they let it run, as you can see there. I mean, the real Fed funds rate at one point got down to about minus 18%. So if, if we get inflation in the years ahead, the, the Fed and the other central banks, they want to let that run because they need debt to GDP to come down. And so the way you get debt to GDP to come down is you need growth and inflation. So if we get inflation, they're going to let it run. I mean, if the Fed, they're only going to hike if inflation picks up. If inflation picks up, you know, they'll hike once or twice. If it you know, picks up big time, they'll hike you know, three or four times. So I mean, there might be, if they hike, you know, there could be a short-term negative reaction. But uh, if inflation picks up, they'll hike, but they'll stay behind the curve. I mean, having negative real interest rates, that's basically staying behind the curve. That's what that means. And another re I mean, that, that's the fundamental explanation of the nasty cyclical bear market that we just had. I mean, it's not, you know, manipulation or they're, you know, forcing down the price of metals or whatever. I mean, it's just, you know, nonsense in my opinion. I mean, it, it comes back to real interest rates. But also there's a technical reason. If you look at this chart, I'm showing uh, various um, secular bull markets. I mean, they're kind of different because we have Japan. We have gold from 1970 to 80. We have the NASDAQ. Then we have gold since 2001 and oil from 98 to 2008. And the circle there, that's where gold peaked. And so, I mean, what this shows 
is gold, and, and, and you, you can see this in another chart I'll have later, but gold in 2011 was really at a point where it was going to go parabolic, as you can see. I mean, it, it could have potentially gone parabolic like it did in 1980 and kind of like oil did in 2008, or it was going to come back down uh, to trend. And obviously, it's easy to say this in hindsight, but I mean, that, that's what I strongly believe this chart says. And so now gold has come back down. I mean, this is, I haven't updated the uh, price action on this chart, but I mean, if gold starts going up, you can see um, it's, if it starts going back up, or it continues to go back up, I should say, it will look similar to uh, those bubbles in uh, tech stocks and Japanese stocks. Just a question for the audience. Let's make this a little interactive. Does anybody know when the greatest buying opportunity of all time was for the stock market? And if you've seen my video I did a couple of weeks ago, you probably know. But what year was the greatest buying opportunity of all time for the stock market? I haven't heard it yet. Good answer. Did anybody say 1942? Oh, congratulations, sir. And uh, also, I mean, we're not going to know for five or ten years, but, I mean, potentially for gold stocks, it sounds really extreme to say, but, I mean, you'll see some of my arguments coming up. But the bottom that we had several months ago, it, it could turn out to be the greatest buying opportunity of all time in gold stocks. So this is, my, this is why I come up with 1942. In this chart, we have the S&P 500, and then we have the rolling five-year and 10-year performance. And so there's three things I'm focusing on here. In 1942, uh, this chart doesn't go all the way back that far, but U.S. stocks in 1942, they were at the same level as they were in 1901, so the same level as 41 years before. Now, secondly, if you look at the rolling long-term performance, I mean, the, in, in 42, the rolling five-year performance was about the second worst ever. The rolling 10-year performance was uh, not quite in 1942, but a year or so before that. It was at the worst ever. At that point, it was even worse than it was in the early 30s. So a great buying opportunity, a, a market has to be completely oversold on all time frames. And then, I mean, the reason why I say 1942 is because the S&P over the next 14 years, it went up nearly sevenfold. And if you include dividends, which I think if I remember, the dividend 1942 was, was either six and a half or eight percent. But if you factor in total return over the next 14 years, it went up 14 fold. And there was only one bear market of 30 percent, which is pretty mild uh, compared to the recent bear markets that we've seen. So the performance was really strong. You know, you're looking at strong performance one year, two years out, five years, and ten years, really on all time frames. And that's why I say 1942 uh, was the uh, best buying opportunity of all time for U.S. stocks. And also for emerging markets at that point. I mean, if you look at probably maybe not 42 in Japan, but Australia and, you know, the other countries, um, you know, I'm sure that they even performed even better. Now, this is the Barron's Gold Mining Index, which goes back to 1938. And so on this chart, I show the rolling five-year performance and 10-year performance. And recently, both of those were the worst ever, basically. And at the recent low, the Barron's Gold Mining Index was at the same level that it was 42 years ago. So remember, with U.S. stocks, it was the same level as 41 years for gold stocks, same level as 42 years ago. So worst five and 10 year performance ever. And the last thing is, which you'll see on the next slide, is the cyclical bear market that we just, that was the worst ever. It was, I mean, it was the worst ever in terms of price. In terms of time, it was actually one week shorter than the 96 to 2000 bear market. Uh, but, but I mean, you know, the chart speaks for itself. And, the stock market in 1942, it also had a four and a half years, it was actually five years, but it had a pretty long bear market from 37 to 42. So I mean, there's a lot of similarities there. I mean, obviously uh, the gold stocks, I mean, we're talking about a tiny sector here. So this doesn't mean that we're gonna have fantastic performance for the next 15 years and there's gonna be no bear market, but we're just, we haven't been set up 
any better than we are right now to have great performance you know, over the next year, five years, and 10 years. And one thing I want to mention, uh, I just want to get back to, is if you look at the rolling five and 10 year performance, it was also very bad there in the, um, excuse me, the early 90s. But the difference is in the early 90s, I mean, if you, if you go back, uh, they were only trading at the same level as you know, about 20 years before. And also if you look at the bear market, the recent bear markets in the early 90s, the cyclical bear markets, they weren't as bad as what we just had. So that, I mean, a skeptic could look at this and say, yeah, well, look at the performance. It was really bad in the 90s. And I mean, we did get that huge bull market in the mid 90s, uh, which was great for a lot of people. But um, that, that's the main difference is that it wasn't preceded by this nasty, worst of all time, cyclical bear market. I mean, these are the things that we're looking at in, uh, as far as the Barron's Gold Mining Index at the recent low. Five-year rolling performance, you know, worse than 90 plus years. Ten-year rolling performance, worse than 90 plus years, et cetera, et cetera. The other thing is if you look at gold stocks against the S&P 500, that was at an all-time low um, at the recent low. And also gold stocks against gold, that was at about a 90-year low. Uh, I mean, I'm, I don't, the Barron's Gold Mining Index doesn't go back to the 1920s, but there was a really nasty bear market in the 1920s that was actually a little bit worse. Okay, so don't buy now. I mean, where we are right now, we've had this huge rebound. It's been fantastic. Everybody is suddenly feeling like a genius. We're all feeling way better than we were about four months ago. But looking at uh, where the gold stocks are now, and this chart is the GDM, the Gold Miners Index, and this is, this is almost the same thing as GDX, the ETF in the US. So um, if you're looking at GDX, I mean, this would be a, a good way to visualize the history of GDX. And so where we're coming to, we have about those, those two red lines around 800 and 810. I think there's about 15% upside to the first one, but that has been a major that level has been a major inflection point since you know, the past uh, 20 years. You can see that we, it, it's been resistance uh, many times in the past. Um, it was support in early 2009 after we had the vertical rebound. Uh, I didn't mark it there. But, uh, so basically, if the gold stocks make a new high and they go up, they, they could go up another 15% or so, but that would lead to probably a sharp summer correction. At the bottom, I'm showing the distance between the gold stocks and three moving average. The distance between the, uh, where the index is now and the 100 day moving average, the 200 day moving average, and the 400 day moving average. Now, if you look at the first two there, we're getting quite close to 2002, and that was a 37% correction, and then the gold stocks consolidated for a number of months, although they gradually trended higher and then broke out. But like I said, 37% correction then. We're not as overbought as we were then, and also we haven't gone up as much um, as we did back then. So I don't think it's gonna be the, uh, if we get a sharp correction, it's not gonna be the exact same, but it could be similar. And another reason on this chart, I compare the, all the rebounds from major lows, the rebound from the 2000 bottom, the rebound from the 2008 bottom, and then the rebound from the bottom that we had on January 19th at 100. And this is daily data just using closing prices. And so the black is where we are right now. And so we're, we followed the 2008 rebound. We're kind of stretched. And if you look at what happened in 2008, we had two corrections in the next two to three months. Also, we had a 20% correction at this point in time uh, following the 2000 analog. So this is another reason to think that a correction could be coming. And this is something I created with my own data, uh, just looking at a number of stocks. Uh, and my data goes back to 2000. I've changed the companies that are in this index numerous times, but to give you an example right now, the, the companies that are here that are in the index, I think New Market is one, Sabina is one, Orzone is also one. So those are kind of uh, the scale, uh, you know, the size and scale of the companies that I have in the index. And 
you can see that how closely this rebound has followed the 2008 one. I mean, it's literally right on top of it right now. And so that would argue for a 26% correction. And then in a couple months later, another 26% correction. So, I mean, these analogs, they're, they're, they're showing that, you know, we're ripe for a correction. And we haven't had anything more than 10% in the last couple months. Okay, well, why do you want to buy soon? Because if, we fall, if gold follows its past cyclical bull markets or rebounds, whatever you want to call them, then that's what could happen. And the ones at the bottom are the 2001 to 2004, and then we have 1985 to 1987. So I don't know, I mean, I, obviously I can't predict the future. Nobody can. Um, if, I mean, if gold is going to follow this path, um, it might, I mean, it, it shows the bull market potentially ending in like 2019. I think that's a little early and you'll see on the next chart. Um, but also take a look at the circle there, which is around, I think 27, 2800. That's exactly where the 2005 to 2008 and then 2008 to 2011 recoveries stopped. That's exactly where they ended. And so they ended like right before going parabolic. So it's interesting going back to one of the first charts I had where in 2011 gold was either going to go up to 3,000 or 4,000 and then the whole bull market was going to be over or was going to have this long correction. So I just find that very interesting that they stopped there before going parabolic. And also if you look at gold peaked at 1,900, the low was 1,040, but let's use 1,050 because it makes math easier. That's 850, and if you apply that on top of uh, 1900, that gives you 2750. So that um, is a potential future price target. Judging from that math and then judging from the analog here, I think that's when gold could really start to go parabolic, possibly around 3000. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be as soon as 2019. Um, this is gold against the S&P 500. The ratio is there in blue and gold's in black. We're at 0 0.62 right now. Uh, but the, the thing I love about this chart, and it goes back to 1887, is there's secular peaks in this ratio every 38 to 40, or we'll just say every 40 years or so. I mean, the, the first peak there was in 1896. And then during the Great Depression, you kind of had a double peak in 1934, 1942, but if you average those together, you get 1938. And so going back from 1886, or is it 1896, excuse me. If you go 1896 to 1938, that's 42 years. And then the next peak is 1980, which is another 42 years. So if you project that forward, that's 2022. Uh, but if you look at if you look at the exact date, I think it actually projects to late 2021. So, like I said, nobody can predict the future, but this chart shows that we've had secular peaks about every 42 years, and so that's what could be coming. I mean, that a potential for gold to have a blow off move, 2020, 2021, perhaps. So going back to the analog. Um, that's why you know, maybe gold has a steadier rise in the years ahead. You know, maybe we have a, a big one-year correction at some point. Maybe it gets to 2,700 and then it goes back down to 2,000 or something like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that would kind of be my thoughts on when it might end. And uh, if you want to subscribe, go to that link, 33% discount. So generally where I'm at, I am right now, I, I if the gold stocks continue to push higher in the next week or two, then it's possible that we could make an interim top and you know, we could see a pretty sharp correction, like 30% this summer. So if you miss something, just wait, because it, I, I think you're gonna have a chance to buy it lower in the summer. But you know, when you're in a bull market, you wanna buy and hold and you wanna buy weakness. And like I said, you know, hold what you have, but I think we, there's a good chance we're going to see some weakness coming up in the summer.
Well, that's all. Thank you. Thank you.